Welcome back to IGN Live at San Diego Comic-Con. Comic-Con is the biggest show in the world and my favorite. Jay and Silent Bob are two of the most iconic stoners in movie history, but since weed makes you forget stuff, they might as well just reboot the whole story entirely. Here to tell us more is Jay and Silent Bob from Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, two of the greatest people in the history of New Jersey, Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith. First off, for those at home who can't see, they're seeing this aspect of it. They spend so much money over there, it's man. Crazy. <laughs> like I walked in, I thought I was coming in for an IGN interview, and they turned into a network. Who knew, man? And then, and then people watch this. They've got right? a crane. There's like, there's a step. I, you walk in, it looks like Mission Control from the Apollo mission. It's like, nuts. It's a hundred people at you're desks. The, you're the second person to say that. Billy Zabka said that. Same thing. Yeah. The same exact reference? Yeah. No, he came in, he's like, whoa, it's like NASA in here. And then he, you know, talked about crime. Now you guys he have to Me and Cobra fight. Kai <laughs> right there. Yeah, right? I interviewed him today. I'm doing what you do, <laughs> do over uh, behind the convention center. I'm on the IMD boat. So I'm also interviewing people all weekend stuff. But it don't look like this. You guys have all the money, man. There's a, you there's guys a, have a boat, though. There's a boat? Yeah. yeah. We haven't, <laughs> they haven't let us leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trust me, you want to be land-based, man. Uh, Jay and Silent, Silent Bob Reboot. We got the trailer yesterday, which was Red Band. That made me very happy to see that right off the bat. Um, how does it feel to be back in these character roles that you've sort of like dipped in and out of your, your whole lives? I, you know, I've, I live in the hat, so I'm, I've kind of never leave Silent Bob. That coat was mine long before it was his. So we, we share back and forth and have had shared over the years. Yes, that's right. Yeah, look at that. That's right. Look at that's it. Right. Don't look away. That's right. Word it out. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you have to see that now. All of you have to see that. That tuck <laughs> is just for you. Um, this guy, on the other hand, he, like, I guess you, you live in the part of Jay, but you're not like the character Jay, but you look more like him and sound more like him. I don't sound like Silent Bob. You'd actually sound like Jay. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Thank you for that courtesy you do. laugh. Somebody, <laughs> they figured that joke out and they're like, that is clever, huh? That's the courtesy <laughs> laugh where he gets like 50 bucks a day. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope I, I guess I sound and, and things, I'm looking a little older and, and sound a little older than the very first one. I mean, it's been 20. No. 25. Oh my God. And the cameras have gotten better right. too. Which and is the not cameras better. have been gotten better, yeah. So cameras are much past. more unforgiving than they ever <laughs> were, man. But it's true, we've been doing this shtick, if you will, for 25 years, and we have been off of it for the better part of a decade or over a decade. We made a cartoon movie at one point, Jason did, uh, called Jay and Silent Bob, super groovy cartoon movie. But we haven't put the outfits back on in a while, and it felt like it was time to do it again because we, we were broke, we ran out of money. No, right. um, it was time to do it again because I had a heart attack, I almost died. And uh, we were trying to make this movie prior to the heart attack, uh, but I wasn't putting my all into it. I was like, well, if it happens, it happens. This will be fun. After the heart attack, we went like gangbusters. It was like I was on a mission, because this was meant to be like, I didn't know if I, how long I'd stick around or if the heart goes again or if it's a chronic thing. So I wanted to make a movie that kind of summed up my entire, not just career, but my life as well. So Jay and Silent Bob Reboot is this uh, weird scrapbook of a movie. It's very, it's oddly emotional. The movie's funny, don't get me wrong. We really tried to make the laughs work. And, and if you've seen by the Red Band trailer, you know, if, if you're into that sort of thing, it's there. But the thing that you're not expecting from this movie is like, you're, you'll cry. Like you're gonna cry in this movie and not because they're like, they ruined it again. Like <laughs> you'll cry because like he pulls off like this pretty emotional performance. In the movie he finds out he's a dad. So the whole movie's kind of about that. Jason is a dad in real life and has been one for four years, I've been a dad for 20 years, but I'm, watching Jason as a father like made me wish that he had had a kid before I had a kid, because I would have learned how to be a better parent from Jason, which is weird because most of our lives, like Jason has been the, the fuck up, like, oh, he makes mistakes and stuff, it's, which is true. But when it comes to this kid, he's absolutely golden. Like you've never seen a better parent, I'm not just saying a better father, but a better parent in your entire life. Like him and the kid are dialed in as one. And it could be because like they're both on the same maturity level, you know, or- Just kind of meeting halfway. There. Meeting halfway, <laughs> absolutely. But like, it's really moving. So watching that for a few years, I was that, that informed what this movie became, where I was like, oh, so let's lean into that and let Jay be a dad. That's it's beautiful. Like, clearly you guys are definitely like focusing on kind of growing up a little bit with this movie, but like you can't, like you can't make Jay and Silent Bob grow up entirely because that would, that would ruin them. Yes. But clearly these characters have grown up along with you as you've grown up. Uh, what's, what sticks out to you the most kind of at looking back at, at sort of the legacy of these two? 
along with your own, you know, personal lives. I can't believe we've gone this fucking far on this shtick, to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> like, you know, especially when we entered the game, I was like, oh, we're like a low-rent Cheech and Chong, you know what I'm saying? Like, they did it prior to us. I also felt like I took the DNA from a lot of twosomes that I loved throughout my uh, movie love and career, man. So there's Jake and Elwood in there, there's Bob and Doug McKenzie in there, um, any, you know, uh, Abbott and Costello to some degree, Cheech and Chong, definitely. So I thought when I included us, it never occurred to me that we would be one of those names. Like in, in, when the movie came, the first one, Clerks came out, in all the reviews, nobody talked about us. I'm not even on the poster. He's the, <laughs> really, they, the, Miramax felt like his character is not that important and left him off the poster. And so it wasn't only People Magazine. Leah Rosen, I think, if I remember correctly, reviewed uh, Clerks and mentioned Jason. And she said, uh, Jason Muse, you want to find the rock he crawled out from under and make sure there's nothing else like him <laughs> under him. And then he asked me, he's like, is that a good review? And I was like, that's yeah. stellar, man, that's fantastic. But nobody really talked about us. If they talked about us in reviews, it was just to say like, oh, the, the director also plays a character called Silent Bob. Mm. Wasn't until the movie went to home video, that's where we found our real audience. Like, cause Clerks only played on 50 screens. It was a real art house release and the intelligentsia like propped it up. But once it got to home video, it's real audience found it. People who are like, I know somebody like Jay and Silent Bob. Mm. And suddenly those characters like took on a bigger life. So much so that the, when we came here, oh my God, it's 24 years ago, we did a screening of Mall Rats here at Horton Plaza, which is now like closed down the movie theater and stuff. So we did it at Comic-Con, it was my first trip to Comic-Con. And we have this screening, Mall Rats goes up for the first time and it's about 250 people from the, from the con world. So they, they might understand this movie, it's in their wheelhouse. Jay and Silent Bob come on the screen for the first time, the audience erupted, like in the way that people erupt when familiar, beloved characters. And this movie, Clerks, the previous movie, hadn't been out for a long time. So right then and there, I was like, they like us. They that was my Sally Field moment. And so I kept putting us into movies, mostly because like, if I put him in a movie, then he wouldn't borrow money from me. So I'm like, here, you're getting paid for real. <laughs> and it just worked out. I've been standing together for the better part of 30 years, professionally and, and personally, man. And uh, I trust nobody more in this world than him. And, and my, it wasn't a gift, but it's a, for our characters, the characters that have taken us so far in life. We've gone everywhere on the backs of Jay and Silly Bob, for heaven's sake. The least we could do for him is deliver them a little bit closer to adulthood. Like the first movie, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, is about like a cartoon character who meets a woman who humanizes him and he gets one more dimension to him. And then Jay and Silent Bob Reboot is almost the same movie where it's like a, a guy who's a little more than a cartoon character meets a woman, this time his daughter, who changes him for the better and makes him a little more human. So by the end of this movie, Jay and Silent Bob are still very much Jay and Silent Bob, but they've been kind of delivered to adulthood. Now, some people out there are like, that sounds like it sucks. Like it might to somebody who's not into that sort of thing. But this was the only version of a movie with Jay and Silent Bob that I could possibly make. One that was all about the heart. This whole movie is like the last five minutes of Big Fish. Do you ever see Big Fish? Yeah. Oh boy. That, that, it's a tear fest. Oh. As, the, as Albert Finney is carried through his life and sees everyone that was ever important to him, it's kind of what this movie is. And I think that's the thing nobody's really expecting or probably asking for. But that was the version of the movie that I wanted to make. I'm happy to do the laughs, man. I could do that in my sleep. And, and that's not bragging. Some people are like, you ain't funny. But for the people that think I'm funny, that's my natural like gear. But what I wanted to bring to this movie was something else. So that when they watched it, they were like, look, I came for the laughs. But he, he filled my heart at the same time. That's incredibly beautiful. Like, I, no, I really love that. Because like, that's <clears throat> also, I, I mean, you're tucking your penis in. Yes. <laughs> it's all the trailer. Like, it starts with a guy with his dick tucked in. To pair those worlds. And I'm sitting there going, it has heart. Yeah, well, no, it was. It was, it was I, trimmed. I, my I, pubes were trimmed to like a heart. So there is, <laughs> right. it starts with heart. Oh, boy. Back. I said the movie had heart. It has no dick because he tucks it back. But it has <laughs> lots of heart. Uh, no, I think there's something magical about uh, the sort of what happens in the margins when people are just kind of hanging out. Everything is about purpose. I've worked like a hundred conventions with Max, and my favorite memory ever was we like I think we got drunk and sat outside of a 7-Eleven and drank Slurpees once right? in Anaheim. And it's the it's the not the high right? points, the obvious high points. Yeah, it's the points that most people wouldn't notice, but that's what makes you human. That little stuff in the middle where you're like, oh, like I've had many. We've been here coming here for since 1995. So 20 this year would be 24 years we've been coming to this con. We've had moments where we've been on stage, 4,000 people, 5,000 in Hall H, like screaming, and that feels great. It's tiny moments, one that we always talk about, and, and like I always remember, especially because it involves like one of our favorite people in the world. Uh, we came to Con, this is going back four or five years ago. We pulled up, and we're pulling up to the, 
loading dock section where if you're going to go in a Hall H or whatever, they bring you back there. So that's where they drop off all the, the talent. So we get out of our car and true talent is coming down the ramp and getting into a car and it's Stan, it's the great Stan Lee. Now we've known Stan at this point for maybe 10 years <coughs> or something at that point, maybe 15. He stops and he's like, Kevin, you know, and he always like said my name in such a way that made me feel fantastic. And then he never remembered Jason's name, so he's like, Kevin, Kevin's friend. You know? yeah. And uh, we were like, hey, man, what's going on? And he's like, I just did my thing, and now me and Max, Max was his body man, his caretaker, we're going to go over to this thing and whatnot. And we just chit-chatted like a couple professionals and stuff, or a couple friends who'd ran into each other at con. And then we had to go do our thing, and he was leaving, so we gave him a hug, and we were like, all right, man, we'll see you later on. So him and I are heading to our panel, and like out of the mouths of babes and other vermin, this dude spits out, he goes, did you ever imagine, like, one day, not only we would go to Comic-Con, but we'd be greeted by Stan Lee like he was our friend? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you're right. That's little moments yeah. like that, man, make this a magical place to be. That's why I'll always come down here, whether I have something to promote or not, man. Magic happens down here in San Diego, at least for this weekend, and probably throughout the year as well. But I can testify to these four days The San Diego Comic-Con is magic on Earth. Damn. Damn, yeah. Give it up. Uh, Seriously, you know give it up for these guys. Um, I don't know when I'll get to talk to you again, uh, and it probably won't be for the rest of the year because there isn't another San Diego Comic Con. Um, you're, you guys are big Star Wars fans. You've mm. had Star Wars cameos and all your things. They're telling me to wrap up, but I have to ask you this before you go. Um, Kevin, can you predict the final shot of Star Wars Episode Nine? Um, and maybe you've seen it. I have no idea. I've not seen it, but, uh, but I was on set. I went to, to uh, London at one point and uh, visited the set. J JJ invited me because I had the heart attack. He was like, when I had the heart attack, he wrote me and he was like, you got to pull through, man, so you can come visit Star Wars. And I was like, can I be in it? He was like, come visit. So <laughs> I, I pulled through and I was the kind of asshole that wrote him back to be like, remember what you said? And he was like, come on out. So I got to hang out and be there on set. And there was a scuttlebutt about a set uh, there on, on, at Pinewood, a big set that they were like, you have to see this. When you see it, it'll melt your mind. And I was like, what was it? And uh, they're like, uh, uh, ask JJ. And so I asked JJ, I was like, they keep telling me I should see the set. And he goes, don't. I said, why? And he goes, the last shot of the movie. <gasps> so I was like, well, now, you, now I really want to see it. And he goes, you don't want this spoiled. You want to be in a theater when this happens, trust me. And then other people on the crew were like, bro, I wish I hadn't seen it. I'm glad I did. He's going, but it will melt your mind. It's, it's, so I, for that reason alone, man, and as inquisitive as I am and curious as I am, I desperately wanted to go look. But like when you talk to the magician, the magician's like, trust me on this one. You know, sometimes as human beings, we want to know how to pull the rabbit out of the hat. But JJ's such a magical magician that I'm just like, you know what? Do it. Trick me. I'll, I'll wait and get tricked. Even though I could have seen what it was, I was like, I'll sit back. I, I, I like your plan. He's never let me down so far. So it's there. I, I, there are people in the world that know what the last shot is, even if the movie's not fully cut together at this point. I'm not one of them. I think that's beautiful that you didn't look. I wanted to so bad. It was a, because of him. He's such a nice dude. He's such a sweet guy. He said it with such sincerity. It wasn't like, bro, don't do this. He was just like, you don't want to do this. You want to see this in a movie theater. Like, and he said it as a film fan. And at that point, I was like, I hear you. I hear you. I heard it as a film fan. Ladies Aren't you gentlemen. glad you asked that yes, question? Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a film fan, you should go see Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. It's out in theaters this October, and we have plenty more Comic-Con coming up right up ahead. I don't think it's going to be as good as that, though, uh, but stick around. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Woo!